Pop quiz, gents. When it comes to shorts, which inseam length suits a man best? Nine inches, seven inches, five inches, or maybe just three inches. And I'm sure some of you guys are saying, no, I need a full 11 inches because I was endowed with quite a manhood. The answer? Well, to be honest, gents, it was a trick question because in the right situation, every short inseam length can serve a purpose. Case in point, the one inch inseam silkies, also known as ranger panties. Now, silkies come in a wide variety of styles and colors. As you can see right here, this pair is featuring St. Mattis of Quantico, but what they all have in common? Comfort and freedom of movement. That's right, gents. Skies out, thighs out. Now, some of you guys are saying, hey, these aren't practical. Guys, here is proof. Firing 81 millimeter mortars downrange in silkies on a hot day? Yeah, nothing like it. But seriously, gents, shorts come in a wide variety of styles, colors, and lengths. And in today's video, I'm going to teach you how to wear them properly. Now, in general, and we're talking about shorts that are above the knee, the shorter the shorts are, the more casual they are. So, if you're going to be wearing shorts with a three inch, two inch, or one inch inseam, usually those are going to be swimming trunks or shorts meant to be worn as underwear. But for the vast majority of men, shorts that they would wear on a daily basis in public, seven to nine inch inseams are going to be where it's at. Now, how do you choose between the two? It's really about your height and your leg length. You see, proportion is what we're going for here. In general, the sweet spot is to cover two thirds of the thigh. So for a man that's six foot two, a nine inch inseam is probably going to get the job done. But for a man that's five foot two, he's going to want to look at a five to seven inch inseam. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Let's take a step back and talk about the history of men's shorts. Now, shorts have been around for hundreds of years. In fact, as long as there have been trousers, they pretty much have been shorts. But seriously, they came about and they became part of uniform wear by the military in tropical regions during the 18th and 19th century. In the 1920s, we saw shorts popping up in swimwear, in the 1930s in sportswear, specifically the tennis courts. Still, for most men, prior to the 1950s, shorts were just too casual. In fact, it was something that boys wore, not men. However, in the 1960s and 70s, as sports gear became more common, as golf started to pick up, you start just saw men wearing shorts more and more out. And especially here in North America, the United States, shorts by the 1970s and 80s had really taken hold. And although today in still many countries it's considered casual wear, shorts have really picked up and it's hard not to travel the world and see somebody in shorts in hot weather, especially if they're an American. Now, gents, if you're enjoying today's video, if you like this type of content, do me a favor and smash the like button. Seriously, when you engage with these videos, you tell the YouTube gods, hey, this video is worth watching. Now, let's talk about the different styles of shorts. First up, we've got athletic shorts. These are made to be able to perform in athletic conditions. So, you're going to see running shorts with a very short inseam. You're going to see a little bit longer basketball shorts, depending on the style and fashion trends at the time. Seriously, anyone remember these ultra long basketball shorts? Now, the fit and material of these athletic shorts really depends on the athlete, the level that he's at, and the situation. So, bicycle shorts. Yeah, if you're going to be out there going to the Tour de France, you bet you're going to wear something close to the body, which probably most of us wouldn't want to just wear around town. Next up, we've got swim trunks. And swim trunks are oftentimes made from material made not only be breathable, but is going to dry very quickly. Now, swim shorts come in a variety of different styles. You've got briefs, the Speedo. You've got just regular trunks. You've got board shorts. It really depends on the style you're looking for. I think most men are served better by trunks, not necessarily board shorts, unless you're in great shape. And when it comes to the Speedo, again, if it's your thing, go for it. But in North America, yeah, you don't see them very often. Now, jumping to a totally different style of short, actually one of the most formal styles out there, we've got Bermuda shorts. And in certain parts of the world, including Bermuda, these can be worn to semi-formal events. Oftentimes in tropical regions, again, they adapted. It makes sense. You're going to wear them with a particular type of socks, but yes, you can wear this with dress shoes. And uh, the look, you know, not my cup of tea. Has anyone actually out there worn or been or seen these? Let me know in the comments below. Next up, we've got denim shorts. And I'll be honest, another look I'm not a huge fan of. In general, I say there are better options out there. Next up, we've got cotton shorts. And I've got two types here. I've got the chino shorts and I have cargo shorts. Let's first talk about the casual option, the cargo short, which is one of the most common styles we're going to see out there. Now, as a father of five and plus my two nephews, seven, and having just been to Disneyland, I can tell you cargo shorts are useful for being able to hold bottles of water on a hot day. That being said, understand, especially when they're in camo, they are ultra, ultra casual. And there's no reason to go for the frayed look on these things. Just wear them in situations in which they're going to be useful, but you don't need to dress up for anybody. But for the majority of situations, when you're going out in public and you actually want to look smart, you want to look well put together, wearing chino shorts that fit you properly are where it's at. Now, the chino shorts I'm talking about are usually going to have an inseam length of seven 
to nine inches. You'll occasionally see it shorter, occasionally see it a bit longer. You always want to maintain about two inches above the knee. Now, they come in a variety of colors and the vast majority will be solid, but you usually want to go with something neutral, something similar to your trousers. That way, it's easy to match, easy to wear with any type of shirt in your wardrobe. So, variations of browns and grays are perfect. That being said, navy, red or even green can work again if you've got shirts that are interchangeable in your wardrobe and those colors work really well when you're going to wear them perhaps like with a white polo. Now, the fabric is going to be a twill weave on the majority of these chinos and that is going to give them a little bit of a sleeker, dressier look. If they're made from a synthetic material, these are technically not chino shorts and they are going to be more on the athletic variant. And why that makes a difference because if you're wanting to wear them with, let's say, a polo shirt, understand that the chino shorts are always going to be a little bit dressier. That being said, this is always going to be casual wear. And that's what I want to stress about shorts, except for the Bermuda shorts. In every situation you're wearing them, this is a casual look. And again, touching on materials, you've got cotton out there. That's going to be the dressiest. Then you're going to see variations of polyester in nylon. Usually that's going to be in performance shorts. That's going to be in athletic shorts. But if you see it in a pair of shorts that look like it could be worn with a polo, uh, again, you're going to have to, at your own discretion, make a choice here. And denim shorts are going to always be ultra casual. Now, this next point is super important, and that is the fit of the short. And that goes beyond just the inseam length. It actually has to do with how much excess material you have around the leg. Now, if you don't skip leg day, if you've got thighs bigger than the average guy's head, most of the off-the-rack shorts are probably going to suit you just fine. They're not going to have a lot of excess material. If you were to crump it up on the sides, maybe you want an extra inch at the least. You don't want to ever wear shorts unless they're athletic shorts that are going to be skin tight. But for the vast majority of guys out there, your legs are going to be a little bit thinner. You're not going to have those thunder thighs. You're going to probably have an extra three to four inches of material, if not more, in the shorts on the side. And one quick tip here is if you really like those shorts, take them to a tailor or do it yourself, but have them thinned up. By streamlining the shorts, it's going to really enhance the look. And if that's too much for you, then look at various brands. Oftentimes, you're going to find brands will make a slim cut short, not all of them, or you may go over and try one brand and say, hey, it's the same size, but these fit me a lot better. And that's the key because every brand is using a different model. I wish they would keep it consistent, but I really do appreciate it whenever a company is creating a slim variation. And don't be afraid, again, to try three or four different brands to find the fit that suits you. Speaking of tailors and fit, one quick tip. If the shorts are too long, you could actually flip them up and hem them and actually have a bit of a cuff. This adds just a bit of texture. It makes them look a little bit more interesting. And as long as, you know, it works for the style, take, take a look at this. It's a little bit more advanced. But if you're taking your shorts to a tailor to get them adjusted, maybe consider it. It may actually really bring new life to an old pair. And let's talk really quick about body types. If you are really thin, again, you're going to want to get the shorts tailored because that excess material is not going to look good on you. If you take care of your body, you don't skip like that. You've got very well-defined legs. Guess what? You are blessed to be able to wear shorter shorts because your legs are just going to look good. If you are a heavier set man, in general, you have to be really careful with shorts. And I would recommend, again, you don't want to go past the knee, but it's okay to have your shorts be a little bit longer to basically balance out the proportions. Now, really quick, gents, if you're enjoying this content, if you want more, go over to realmenrealstyle.com. That's my free website where we have infographics, tons of information that you can go through and read, free downloads, and there's our style score quiz over there. So, if you're making mistakes, we talk about this in the quiz. It's a really simple quiz that you can take absolutely free and get feedback on how to improve your style. You get an actual number and how to improve your style so that you can be the best dressed man in the room. So, now let's talk about styling those shorts. So, you got three major shirt options here. You have the t-shirt, you have polo shirts, and you have casual button downs. Now, one thing I love about keeping your shorts simple is that you can wear a variety of t-shirts with this. That being said, if you want to make it look a little bit nicer, go for maybe a v-neck, go for a dark or color. You can go for a monochromatic look there. But if you really want to step it up, look to the polo shirt. So, polos are great. They've got a hundred years of history in menswear, so it's a classic item and that collar dresses it up. On top of that, they're incredibly comfortable, often made from a moisture wicking material and it just feels right with the short combination. Now, what about casual button downs? Yes, you can pull this look off and it looks best when you roll 
the sleeves. Some guys even go for the half tuck. If you're that fashion forward, what are you doing watching my videos? You should be helping me make them. But seriously, guys, I do think, and I've seen some great looks with a tuck in the shirt. Other guys leave it untucked. In general, though, if it has long tails, you're going to want to wear it tucked in. All right, so we got shirts. Now let's talk about your footwear. First up, the socks. Crew socks, you want to avoid in general. Ankle socks, fine if you're going to be wearing running shoes, running shorts, and you just want a little bit more coverage. But for the majority of situations, at least, you know, this year and what the current fashion trends are, I really like no-show socks. And in case you're not familiar, quality no-show socks should actually have a bit of a stick and elastic inside of them that adheres to the back of your heel. And uh, yeah, if they keep slipping, if they keep disappearing down your foot, uh, you need to get a better quality or better fit no-show. That being said, now let's get into shoes. So we talked about with athletic shoes, of course, you're going to be wearing running shoes or whatever your sporting event requires. Now, if you're heading to the beach, sandals are perfectly fine. I do like sandals over flip-flops. Flip-flops for me are just simply wearing right there at the situation. They really don't give you much traction. If you were to have to run or move around, yeah, you're going to lose, the, you're going to be barefoot very quickly. At least sandals, you have a little bit of traction on them. And do not wear sandals with socks, guys. That combination, no. Come on. So what about sneakers? If you're in your 20s, 30s, I think they are an excellent option. If you're in your 40s or 50s and you're going to be walking throughout New York City, putting on 20 miles sightseeing, yeah, sure, wear sneakers. Maybe look to step it up a bit, especially if you're wearing that polo, that casual button down. Look at some leather sneakers. You got tons of options out there. That being said, if you're trying to dress up the shorts just a bit, should you go for, you know, Oxfords? No. Go with loafers. If you're looking at dress shoes, go with the dress shoes that slip on and off a classic pair of penny loafers or maybe horse bit loafers. You got quite a few options out there. Find the loafers that work for you. And gents, if you enjoyed today's video, you are going to love this one. Yes. Stop wearing your polo shirt wrong. So many of you guys are messing this up. I've got you covered in this video right here because I want you to look good. So check it out, guys. Solid video. Boom. Right there.